you believe that there is an underlying objective reality. We just may be, it may be too elusive for us to, uh, to grasp. Um, I, I would put it differently. I, is it this stupid academic debate or is it an important essential debate about whether there is such a thing as truth or is truth just really relative, subjective, up for grabs. But the entire Thin Blue Line is an exercise um, in the belief in truth, properly considered. It answers many of those fundamental questions that I have about documentary, about investigation. Um, it doesn't matter that whether the Thin Blue Line was made with reenactments or without reenactments. It doesn't matter whether it had or didn't have a, a score by Philip Glass, um, even though that score to me is one of Philip's great achievements and something that I am proud to be associated with. Um, the style of the film was not as important as one essential ingredient and that was the pursuit of truth. It's something you pursue. It's something that you go after. It's something that you try to uncover. Um, it's deeply unpostmodern. Uh, it's anti-postmodern, would you say? I would say it's anti-postmodern in its essence. Um, it's saying that there's a real world. And things happen in that real world. There is a roadway in Dallas, there's a police car, there is a policeman who gets out of that car, there is someone in that stopped vehicle who pulls a gun from underneath the driver's seat and who pulls the trigger. And that's not relative, that's not subjective. Uh, maybe this is unfashionable to talk this way, but there is an absolute truth there. We might have difficulty trying to uncover what that truth is. We might make mistakes, we might get confused, we might go down some blind alley trying to figure out what happened, but make no mistake, something did happen and it's our job to figure out what it is that was. What happened on that roadway? Who pulled the trigger? Who shot the cop? Who is the killer? Who is the fall guy? Um, and that has nothing to do with style. Um, there was an article, I guess it appeared today in the New York Times, that mentions the Thin Blue Line and the lawsuit. Randall Adams, the guy I got out of prison, sued me um, shortly after he got out of prison. Um, in the article, which I liked, um, they failed to mention one thing, which I did say to the interviewer, to the writer, that I felt I had one central obligation to Adams. Um, and that was to uncover the evidence to prove he was innocent and he did not receive a fair trial. That was my obligation to him. Uh, and I feel on some very deep level, and this is something that I am really proud of, it's the thing in my life, in addition to the wife and child, <laughs> that I'm most proud of, is that I was able to get that guy out of prison. It's something I really, really did, and whether it was done with a movie or without a movie, with Philip Glass or without him, with reenactments or without reenactments, I did do that, and it's something that I am really, truly proud of.